So I don't know if you've seen these or not. There are portable fans sold across most of Asia and the US, and they're being turned into wind turbines because you can buy them for about three or four dollars. Well, you can't here in the UK. In the UK, they cost about uh, 10 pounds to 20 pounds. But the rest of the world who isn't being ripped off in import DTs is paying just a few dollars for these things. And the reports are that they make absolutely brilliant wind turbines, producing three or four watts for your three or four dollars spend. Now remember, wind generators are based, uh, basically two parts. We've got this bit, which captures the wind energy, and then we've got this bit, which turns the wind energy into electricity. Now this bit seems really good. This bit seems really poop. So there's something we can do about that. But let's investigate what this is by basically pulling it to pieces. Okay, and that's it to pieces. Now there's this central piece here, and that cover sat on there, and that blade went in there. So I removed that, and we got this central piece. And we look there, we can see it's a ring magnet, pretty much the same that you see in a PC fan, and a pretty firm axle in a chunky bit of plastic underneath. So that bit is the rotor. Now the stator is just awesome. There's the bits of the stator. That is a single coil. So we've got a coil going around there, it's got a metal centre, and it went on there like that, and that's how the thing was put together. And it's these bits that create the magnetic field. So they're crab claws that go into each other like that. Now, if you remember your dynamo and motor rule, then we've got a direction of winding, we've got a current or we've got a motion, and the north and south appear on these faces. What these do is bend the north and south, so if that one's north, that's one south, bends it round so we have an alternating north-south, north-south going around the crab claws, and that's the bit that interacts with this. So this gets hit here, alternating north and south, which then gets transferred to the end plates, and because we now got it on the end plates, that coil, even though it's in the wrong orientation, then becomes a generator. Now, it's exactly how a car alternator works. So it's pretty cool. And there it is back together. And now it just slots on that axle. And that's our generator. So that's the stator, that's the rotor, and that's how it works. Okay, it helps to understand if we take a coil. Now if I take a coil and pass a current down there, what I'll do is I'll create a north pole on this side and a south pole on that side. If I alternate that current, so I swap it the other direction, then the poles will swap. So when we put an AC current down a coil, what we have is poles created here, swapping over like that. Now the coil in that fan is like that. We can bend magnetic fields by using a flux path, and we've done that before in a previous video, bending magnetic fields. When we create that pole here, if we have a disc with fingers down, we can move that so that it's actually at the face of the fingers rather than the top and the bottom. Because if we do that, we create a rotating magnetic field on those fingers, and that's how the motor works. Now, it's identical to run a motor or a generator. So if we don't put a current down there and we rotate a magnetic field around those fingers, we'll generate a coil. We'll generate a current. It's exactly the way a car alternator works. And if you look at the crab claws in a car alternator and compare it to the motor that we've just looked at, you'll see that they're identical. They're a coil in that orientation, plate and fingers pointing down, and the flux is at the edge of the fingers. So it is, in essence, an alternator. Now, of course, in an alternator, you create the magnetic field by using another current. In this little motor from the fan, that magnetic field is created by permanent magnets. Now, we can do exactly the same thing with an ordinary car alternator. If we explode out and have a look at what makes up a car alternator, the bit that we're actually interested in is the rotor there. It's the clad crawl rotor. And if we take that crab claw rotor and separate the two crab claws out, the coil in the centre can be replaced by a permanent magnet. Now, to separate those out, you will in fact need a puller because they're pressed together with quite a lot of force. And a puller is about the only way to get them apart. I have seen people doing this with a hammer, but unless you're very careful with it, you'll mushroom the ends. You pull off the bottom part first, leaving the coil on the top part, and then use the top part 
to press against the coil and it will separate your alternator out for you and you'll be left with the axle and the two crab claws and the coil. Obviously the coil we don't need, we can replace that with a magnet. Now I have seen people using ceramic magnets but this is a neodymium magnet, an N52, that you just slap in place if you know what you're doing. These are extraordinarily powerful magnets and need to be approached with caution. And hey presto! Now when they run the magnet on the inside of the coil, so there's the magnet and there's the coil right there and the magnet runs on the inside, it's called an inrider. You see those in things like this, which is a washing machine pump. When you run the magnets on the outside of the coil, it's an outrider. And you see things like that on PC fans. The coil is kept still because it's really easy to wire up, to connect to things. And then you just move the magnet and you don't have the problem with slip rings or commutators. So this um, small, compact, cheap Philippine South Asian uh, motor is an outrider version. You see the inrider version actually all over the place. It's the turntable motor in a microwave oven. It's exactly the same kind of motor, only it's an inrider. Now we've looked at this idea several times on the channel. Here's an example of it. It's where we took a speaker magnet and we put a metal shield to bend over the fingers to bend the flux and we used that as a generator. We also did a very similar thing with a bicycle wheel. So we've used this idea before in the, um, in the channel several times in fact and the advantage of it is it's cheap. I mean unbelievably cheap because if you're having to wind your coils like this in that kind of stator they're quite difficult to get in place and it makes it very much more expensive because it's more machining. You're winding a single coil and bending some steel over the fingers it makes the motor or the generator incredibly cheap, as is testified to by the price of these fans. They're just a few dollars, they're, they're next to nothing really. So that generator stroke motor is really, really cheap to make. And that's a huge benefit because it brings down the cost of generation. The thing that I'm uh, really quite impressed by is the level at which it can generate. Most people are reporting three or four watts from these little generators and are marveling at it. And it's quite cool that this stuff we made years ago has got kind of a validation, if you like. So, if you're thinking about your own homemade generator and making your own coils, then really, it's quite a good way to go to achieve a good result for not very much effort. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.